Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A week or so ago, I did a video where I demonstrated a very easy composite by replacing the sky in an image and adding a bird to that sky. After that video posted, uh, several people commented that they wanted to see more compositing videos. So I thought I'd do a series where I do different composites and we're going to start out with a very easy composite. This is like compositing 101. Just the basics to take an element from one image and put it into another image. In this case, we're going to take the doctor out of this image and we're going to put her in a hospital hallway or corridor. And this is like the easiest thing you could do in compositing is to easily clip out someone. And we're going to go through all the steps. Now we'll start out with the image of the doctor and what we need to do is get rid of the background. So she is just on blank pixels. To do that, get a selection tool by hitting the W key on your keyboard. Now it doesn't matter which selection tool happens to be active. When you hit that W key right now, it has the quick selection tool. If I click with the left mouse button and hold, you can see that there's three tools there, object selection, quick selection and magic wand. It doesn't matter which one because what we're going to do, because she's on a you know plain uh, seamless paper background, is I'm just going to click on select uh, subject right here. And when we do that, um, Photoshop finds our subject, which happens to be the doctor. Now it looks like it did a pretty good selection. If it didn't, you could use the quick selection tool and kind of fix it a little bit. And in the future, I'm sure we'll have a video or we'll have a situation where I will have to use like the quick selection tool to kind of fix this select subject selection that just happened. But it did a good job. So what we're gonna do next is go to select and mask. And right now I have it set up so that it's on a red background. Right here, that's the view mode. If you click right here, you could see there's different uh, backgrounds. You could do onion skin, a lot of people like that. You could do marching ants. Again, I usually use the red overlay. Uh, some people like it on black. And at times I will use on black. Sometimes I'm clipping people out from red backgrounds and I can't tell if I'm really have them clicked out, clipped out. So what I'll do is I'll go to the black background and I take opacity and turn it up. And that helps me see the edges and make sure that I'm getting a nice clean cutout. Uh, but as I mentioned, usually I prefer this red background. Now, what you could try to do when you have a person that you're clipping out is at this point right away, as soon as you have, you clicked on, you know, refine mask, is go to refine hair. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't work. We'll click on it now and see what happens. And it did a good job. It filled out her hair a little bit. If it doesn't work, if it looks worse, there's no undo refine hair uh, button. But what you can do is hit Commander Control Z is in Zebra. That's just the universal undo. And when you do that, you'll go back one step and you'll undo the hair. For example, I'll do it now. Command Z on my Mac, Control Z on a PC. And you can see how it undid it. I'll do it again by clicking refine hair. And then I could hit Commander Control Z again to undo it. So just know that that keyboard shortcut because it will come in handy. All right, it, it, it's a really good clip out, but we have a little bit of fringing on her cheek over here and around her ear, and it's missing some hair a little bit. And again, I've mentioned this in the past whenever I do composites, don't worry about every single strand of hair. Just get enough hair so that it looks good. You don't need every single flyaway hair to be uh, clipped out. Now over here on the left hand side, we have a number of tools to help us with this um, selection. Um, at the very top, we have a quick selection tool that's the same tool that's in Photoshop. Below that, we have this refine edge brush and that's the one you're going to use the most. Below that is just a regular brush. So you're just brushing in or brushing out with that. Below that, we have an object selection tool that's the same as the object selection tool that's in Photoshop. Below that we have a lasso tool and if we click with the left mouse button and long click you can see that there's also a polygonal lasso tool there as well. 
you have a hand tool there. If you want to zoom in, move around, you use the hand tool. And of course, you zoom in with that magnifier. Now we're going to go to the Refine Edge brush, which is this one right here. At the top, you could see that you have some attributes. Are you adding to the selection, removing from the selection? Uh, you have some brush attributes there. Right now, you can see hardness is all the way up. Um, you can mess around with those as needed. Now, what I'm going to do is just leave these settings right here. I'm going to add to the selection. I'm going to come in here where this kind of flyaway hair is a little bit. And you can see as I'm brushing, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. As soon as I let go with the left mouse button, you can see that something happens. So we'll come in here. It seems like there's a little bit of haloing up here and around her ear I mentioned and her cheek and you can see how that hair is coming back that was down there so that looks good now you can see when I was brushing over here it also affected over here um, it looks then you know I'm brushing on stray hairs over here it's also finding stray hairs over here when it does it so it really refines the edge all the way around so that looks pretty good uh, another thing you could do now is come over here on the right and you have a lot of different tools. Sometimes uh, you want uh, the edge detection isn't working quite right and you may want to increase the radius. In this case, we don't have to. You could click on Smart Radius and it supposedly uses a different algorithm to look for the edge of uh, like her lab coat here. It looks a little funky. Let me kind of do that. Um, so you could do that. You could smooth the edge if you have a lot of jagged edges. You could smooth it with that. Could feather it. Sometimes feathering um, makes uh, the composite just look better if the edges are just slightly blurry. And I will do that a little bit. Uh, contrast. Um, if you have a high contrast edge and it needs, you need help getting that clipped out. If you turn this up, it will help find that edge for you. You could shift the edge. Often we do this in product photography when we're using a pen tool. For example, if you're photographing. Um, sneakers uh, for a catalog let's say and you're using the pen tool to make your selection and making a path then you turn it into a selection a lot of times you'll shift the edge in a little bit so you're just kind of eliminating a pixel or two around the edge of the shoe it just gives you a really nice clean edge and you would use this uh, in that instance and some others too uh, in this case we don't have to do it we could clear the selection, start over, invert the selection. Right now we have the doctor selected. If I want the background selected, I would invert it. Then below that we have output settings. Um, if you click on decontaminate colors, sometimes this improves the selection. Let's click on it and see. Watch her. And you can see it really filled out her hair quite a bit. See that? There's before and there's after. So I like that. The thing is, when you use decontaminate colors, your output only is allowed to a new layer with layer mask. Um, you can see some of those selections in layer masks are grayed out, so you, you limit your output choices down here. If you don't use decontaminate colors, you have all the output choices available, and usually I use the top one, selection. And in a future video, there probably will be an instance where I will use this top one selection because it kind of affects what you do going forward, what your output is uh, too. So we'll use decontaminate colors because it definitely is better. And we'll use new layer with layer mask, all right? And we'll click OK. And what you'll see is you'll return to Photoshop and you'll see that the background layer is now turned off and that our uh, clipped out doctor is here with a mask masking out the background. Now what I like to do, this is optional, but I just do it because I, I don't know, I, this is the way I learned, is I just click right on the mask, left, uh, right click I should say, right on that mask, and I apply the layer mask. And what that just does, it just gives you a clipped out doctor without any layer mask at all. Now we have to move the doctor over to the hospital corridor. Now what I do is I get the move tool, the shortcut keyboard shortcut for the move tool is the V key. V is in victory. It's the top tool over here. And I just click and drag her over there. So I click and I drag up to that tab with the hospital in it and I drop her in there. Now I'm going to undo that by hitting command Z on my Mac. It's control Z on a PC. Some people have emailed me and saying that clicking and dragging doesn't work on their computer. I'm not sure why, but a lot of people have this issue. I don't know if it's a computer setting or if it's a, 
a Photoshop setting I'm not aware of, or if it's a Windows thing and I'm using a Mac. But for some people, just clicking and dragging doesn't work. So what you need to do, if you're one of those people, is you need to select everything here by hitting Command or Control A. All right, so we, we selected everything even though it doesn't look it. And then um, we're going to copy it by hitting Command or Control Z, uh, C as in cat. All right, so Command if you have a Mac, Control if you have a PC, A, so you have uh, everything selected. Then Command or Control C to copy it to the clipboard. Then go over to the hospital corridor in this case and hit Command or Control V as in victory and you'll paste it. So you just copy and paste it, that's all. All right, now she doesn't fit. Now we have the move tool again and we can move her around. But she really doesn't fit, right? It doesn't look right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in what's called free transform mode by hitting Command or Control T as in transform. And you can see you get these handles now and we'll just make her fit the corridor. And, you know, you can just throw her in there. You can see her hair looks natural. Everything looks good. When you're done, hit this little check mark up here. And now we have a hospital corridor with a doctor standing in it, posing for a photo. And the lighting seems to match. That's important, too, whenever you do a composite, that you need your lighting to match. I purposely picked a very easy composite where the lighting matches, and we don't have to worry about that right now. In a future episode... Uh, we'll get into that where we need to do things uh, with the lighting on our subject so that it better matches the scene. But you can see it looks pretty good right here. So that's like compositing 101, just the bare basics, what you need to do, uh, need to know to do a composite. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.